Hello and welcome to this week's Biz Smart Lunch and Learn webinar. Our weekly webinars are aimed to provide advice and share knowledge amongst business owners on key business topics and specialist areas. This is part of our service to our Smart Room members. If you're not already a member or a Biz Smart client and would like to access our archive of webinars, then please visit our website, biz-smart.co.uk and go to the Smart Room page. Our host joining me today is Helen Davis from Coldicott Freelance Training. But before we start our webinar, please may I ask you to use the question mark function on your screen to post any questions that you may have for Helen, and she will do her best to answer them all at the end of the session. Thank you, Helen. Over to you. Thank you. So um, the topic for today is uh, what do I post on social media? Um, and if I had a pound for every time I got asked that question, um, I'd be a very rich person. <laughs> um, so it's probably one of the most popular social media uh, questions that I get asked. Um, and there are just uh, five different areas that I want us to cover. So basically, um, having a look at what your social media strategy is, so what you're trying to achieve in the first place. Uh, what is your social media goal for the business? Uh, which social media networks are my customers using, um, what my customers are interested in, and how to write your own social media plan. So just to run through these, what's your social media strategy? So basically, what we're going to have a little think about is uh, what you're trying to achieve by using social media. Um, um, what you really need to have a think about is um, your main business focus. So social media can help you achieve lots of different things, raising your brand awareness, um, encouraging engagement, getting your products and services out there. Um, and a lot, a lot of uh, clients will say to me, well, I want to achieve all of these things. But if we don't actually have um, something that we pinpoint and focus on to start with, um, then you can get too, too easily, you don't focus your content um, and make sure that they arrive at the right landing pages. So some of the things um, that you can achieve by using social media are attracting more leads, uh, raising your business profile, um, increasing web traffic, building an online community, um, increasing membership uh, for a membership organization, uh, sharing information, selling products and services, building newsletter lists, or demonstrating your products and services. So really, what I would start by doing is asking um, a company to choose maybe a maximum of three of these different um, business aims and then decide how you're going to measure your success. So for example, um, if you're particularly looking to attract more leads and make sure that this is actually going to work through your social media, you probably need to create posts that are uh, directed at a contact form or a request to quote form that's based on your website. If you're trying to, say if you're a new business startup or you're trying to um, raise uh, brand awareness, um, what you're trying to do is create content uh, that's very um, easy to share, that um, people are likely to repost or retweet or share on their Facebook pages, whatever it might be. So things um, that work quite well in this respect aren't promotional things for your business. They're more um, inspirational or aspirational type of things or they're how-to things or they're tips that are helping your customers. So th these are really non-salesy where you're giving away a little bit of free advice um, and that kind of thing. Um, again, more um, if you're trying to build an online community, um, you need to think about what the community is interested in, um, selling, uh, sharing um, events in the community um, that people could be going to, or um, highlighting news that's relevant to that local community, and then ask people questions so that you're trying to uh, drive engagement and get people to respond, or if you want to uh, promote an event or something like that, that you actually particularly ask them to share that event with their friends and family. So there's lots of, basically, once you've decided uh, what those three main aims are that you've decided for your business, you decide how you're going to measure your success and you start all of that before you even go anywhere near a social media channel. Okay, so that um, starts getting you a bit of a social media strategy together. Um, we don't want to do the whole social media strategy today because obviously it's about what, what we, the actual content that we post. Um, so, but obviously depending on um, who your audience is would depend on the kind of um, 
content that's going to resonate with them. So much like different radio and TV channels or different newspaper audiences, different social media channels appeal to different groups of people. Um, and in short, um, if you're a B2B uh, business, so um, if you usually sell to other businesses, um, or if you sell to consumers, you're either B2B or B2C. Um, so if, you're, if you sell to other businesses, typically um, the right social media channels for you would include LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, and maybe Facebook. And that's not to say that you use all of those. Um, it's just saying that those would be relevant to you and then you can prioritize which are going to be most useful depending on what your business aim is. Um, and then if you're B2C, then Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, TripAdvisor, YouTube, and again, Twitter um, might be uh, social media channels that are relevant to um, attracting more consumers. So once you've got your channels in place, um, you need to have a think about what your customers are interested in. So again, another sort of before you even go down this route if we ha had a bit more time what you might start to do is think about um, who your ideal client is and what they look like um, and the kind of things that um, you know what their trials and tribulations are things that um, they lose sleep over at night those kind of things you know that uh, that are keeping them up um, and how you can help resolve those problems for them or um, yeah, so it's just, it's basically profiling your ideal clients. Um, an easy way to achieve this is actually, you could do it, um, you can uh, interview a customer or, uh, you know, and go down that route if you've got a trusted uh, ideal client that um, would allow you to go down that route. Um, but another thing uh, that you can do is actually think about uh, your top 10 customers um, and write out um, I don't know, the, uh, their preferred um, newspapers or uh, TV channels or where they shop or products that they uh, might be interested in. All of these kind of things would help you profile those customers um, and just get more of an insight into what they're interested in. So, but the other thing to think about is what information do your prospects need um, in order for them to make a decision about whether to choose your company and the products and services that you provide, or what they will find as useful information. So, whether you know whether that's useful that they're going to learn something new, or whether it's um, something that's going to inspire them. Okay, so just to go into a bit more detail. The most important thing is that you resonate with your with your customer. So it must be relevant to them. It must think they must think, oh yeah, that's interesting. That's something that I'll either come back and find out more information, or it's something that I think is so good and that it's relevant to my audience that I might reshare it. So that's another thing. If you're wanting, um, inf if you want to raise your profile, it might be thinking what's easily shareable information. So um, just to run through this list quite quickly, um, there's hot industry news. So it's thinking about what's uh, the latest news that's happening in your industry or any recent developments that might be happening. Um, sharing your company news. So whether that's um, you've got new staff that are joining or any uh, training investment that you've made or any um, hardware that you've invested in or charity fundraising, those kind of things. They're all, they give a bit of um, personality um, to what's going on behind the scenes. Um, so what's new? So what you're offering in terms of new products and new services and new developments to keep a ahead of the industry if you like and keep ahead of your competitors um, and obviously offer um, your customers that advantage as well. Um, writing blogs, so blogs can be used for a range of things um, but again sort of sharing knowledge and sharing information about your products and services, putting uh, case customer case studies on there and how your products been used, all of these kind of things are, are, are quite helpful but with a blog you get the opportunity because you're posting on a regular basis whether that's once a week fortnightly or once a month um, you can have a series of linked blogs that uh, makes the reader want to come back again um, to read the next article so um, 
as I've mentioned already, giving away um, top tips and free advice is always good. Um, people like to get anything for free. Um, so um, a, a little, I think a lot of customers say, well, I don't want to give away um, too much information or because they should be paying for that or, or whatever. But it's actually, it's just giving an insight um, or, or helping people out. Um, so it, there's nothing to actually you know, replace you being there in person and delivering that service. So it's just a few uh, top tips and uh, free advice there. Inspirational quotes. Some people, you either love these or you hate them. So again, you've got to think about whether this is right for your business. Um, so perhaps, I don't know, if you're... Um, if you're into fitness or health and beauty or, or those kind of things, um, you know, sort of inspirational quotes um, on a for Monday motivation to keep people on their on the right journey um, can be quite inspiring, and people find those very easy to share. Um, surprising facts and figures. So, for example, how much will your customers benefit from using your product? So whether that's a cost saving or if they're going to, you know, double their turnover. Um, so how many people already use your product, as an example? So if you can say, you know, 8,000 people are already signed up or something, it shows that you're, um, you might have a trust, trusted uh, software or that kind of thing. Um, or how many years experience you might have. All of these things. You know, people say, oh, I don't know what to share. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know what's, you know, what's interesting that people will be interested in. But I find that when I go to, um, a, to visit a client, usually their website's full of these little nuggets or gems of information that they can share. But I think because they, it's there all the time to them, it's, they, they're not sure whether they should be sharing that kind of thing on social media. But absolutely you should. Um, so you can give give away free advice and information and things like that. But um, sort of the 80-20 rule is that um, you you give 80% free information and things like that, and you might do 20% promotional stuff. So actually, um, your events, so pub publicizing your events, if you're wanting uh, people to join onto new events, then obviously posting um, videos or photos from past events um, so that people get a flavor for what the, what they're um, signing up to is a very good idea. Um, so real photos and videos. People like to see other people's faces in, in uh, photos. So if someone's there having a nice time or they're smiling or, you know, then again, this will build trust uh, with your uh, product and service. Or if someone's using your uh, product, that's, uh, that's a really good, you know, it's a picture paints a thousand words. Um, testimonials or case studies. So again, we spend um, lots of time and effort writing these and creating these and collecting them. Um, and social media is a great way to amplify and get those out there. Um, but all of this so far has been one way traffic. Okay, so what I've I've um, mentioned about posting, what do we post, which is presuming that that's um, all information going from us out to, to the outside world. And this is another thing about social media that people need to understand is that it's, um, you know, it's a networking site. Uh, they're all different uh, networking sites and communication tools. So it should always be, be two-way traffic. Um, so it's also making sure that you're following the right people that resonate with your um, target audience and sharing their content. And you don't have to create... Um, I tweeted it, you know, you, you're not having to create enough content that you're tweeting 10 times a day or something like that. You might create two, two that are your own, and then you might share, you know, two or three of other people's as well. You don't need to be the fountain of all knowledge. There's a lot of information that's out there that's very good. So it's choosing the right resources of that information that you find reputable, trustworthy, and that you would share. Okay, so some of those might be industry associations and things like that, um, or marketing, you know, uh, for myself, it might be the Ch uh, Char Chartered Institute of Market Marketing, or um, Marketing Week, or the Entrepreneur, you know, you would find um, maybe four or five different uh, trusted uh, resources that you would share that content from. Um, and it's also sharing other people's things that they're trying to promote and, and events that they're trying to promote as well. So how are we doing for time? We're, we're getting there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to zip through to the next one. Um, so 
how to get people talking about you. So the, the other advantage to social media is that you don't just need to um, create all this content yourself and put it out there. What you want to do is think, um, try and make it easy for people to generate content for you. Um, so a good way to do this, say if you're running an event, is to create a hashtag for the event and promote that hashtag. Um, so that's one, one way, and then people will take photos or they'll make comments and they'll start a conversation using that hashtag. Um, the other thing is um, to talk to other people. So you can you can start a conversation or you can join a conversation. So if you're starting your own conversation, then you create your own hashtag. Um, if you want to join a conversation, then you search for an existing hashtag and use that hashtag. Okay. So for example, there's lots of different networking hours uh, like Worcestershire hour. Um, so you know that at Every Monday between 8 and 9 uh, p.m. in the evening, you can go um, onto Twitter, for example, search for Worcestershire Hour and then start um, a conversation with lots of local business owners. So you, you can just start chatting like you would in a, in a networking group. Um, you need to update uh, regularly to make sure that your um, posts and tweets are seen and that they, particularly with Facebook, that you get somewhere with, within the algorithm. Um, but really, actually, with Facebook, you probably need to do, go the advertising route if uh, if that's the, uh, your chosen channel. But um, I've uh, mentioned here at mentioning or t uh, tagging relevant people. And um, so an example of this, um, I was at a, a company yesterday and they... Uh, they were commenting about uh, McLaren. So if you're um, referencing, you know, a big brand or, um, I don't know, an, uh, an event venue or something like that, or talking about someone else, you need to make sure that you at mention them and let them know that you're uh, having a discussion about them. Um, and that will, hopefully, they might, re if you're nice and positive and keep it all, um, you know, good PR for them, then you might get a retweet and then get, potentially get in front of their audience. Um, so joining in, searching for relevant groups or hashtags, and sharing other people's news, because it's a reciprocal kind of thing, you're trying to build rapport with people, so um, just by standing there with a loudspeaker and posting loads of stuff outgoing, um, that's not a good way to sort of make friends and influence people, so you want, uh, need to share other people's content as well. Um, You'll find, um, if you're on any of the social media networks, that you'll get notifications and messages when people start to follow you and like your stuff and comment. Um, so it's um, very good that you reply to any of these in a um, very quickly, um, so you respond uh, quickly to any comments. Thank people, so if people share your content, that you thank them and they might come back and do it again. Um, people like good news stories, so if you've helped uh, someone else or if you've implemented a success story or you've got a, a good case study again they're quite good things to share um, and also uh, mention your uh, customer and then post things that are easy to comment on so asking questions and things like that and then when, while you're doing all of this um, it's a good idea to measure uh, how many messages you're sending out, what topics you're talking about, and this would all be part of your social media plan. And then you can review it and improve on those things. So I've just got a couple of examples here. Um, so here we've got um, Beaudley Museum, and they've um, advertised an, um, an event, uh, which was their Harvest Fair in October last year. Um, and just making sure that you're updating things uh, regularly with um, fun, timely events on your Facebook page and things like that is a good thing to do. And then people will find, if it's relevant to them, that they'll tag uh, friends and family to let them know that that event's happening or whatever. So other people will help you promote those events, but you've got to post them in the first place. Okay. Um, a good way to actually raise the profile of uh, I keep saying events, so this is uh, one thing, uh, one example. So uh, getting people talking about you is to tag other companies or organisations. So for example, here we've got Work Up Forest District uh, Sports Development uh, Team, and they're pro promoting about um, an inclusive multi-sports club. So they've at mentioned in here the, the Odell Centre, English Federation of Disability, uh, Disability Sport, SWESH, which is... Um, the actual type of activity that they're doing, um, 
Disability Sport Worcester, Sports Partnership Herefordshire and Worcestershire and Disability Action. So all of these um, organisations have been tagged and they will then, if they think that's relevant to their audience, they'll share that and that's a good way to actually, so you don't feel that you're just talking to the people that follow you, that you reach a wider audience. Oops, there we go. So um, keeping the content uh, varied as well is a good thing to do. So whenever you're posting, you should be including a photo or a video on there. And that, I think, brings us to the, to the end of the session. Great. Thank you very much. Um, let's see if there's any questions for you coming through. Yeah, brilliant. Your first question we've got from um, Helen, and she asks, is it okay to repeat content that I've already posted? Um, yes, that's absolutely fine. Um, obviously, um, you don't want to be po posting the same thing over and over again without any gaps. Um, but when we take the uh, time and effort to, for example, create a good blog, um, you can share that more than once. Um, and particularly, um, what I would recommend with clients is when we review uh, performance for the past months, um, say if a, a particular post has done very well and got lots of engagements and shares and retweets and things like that, that sometimes we post that again the following months, okay, as long as it's all still relevant and newsworthy. So absolutely you can repeat content, but as long as you're not um, sort of doing that, uh, repeating it um, you know, 10 times in an hour or something like that, that would be frowned upon by, by um, some of the social media sites. Okay, thank you. Your next question is from Louise. Um, would you recommend outsourcing this activity to create content? Um, yes and no. Um, so it depends who you're going to outsource to. But if you've, um, if you've found um, a reputable person, um, for example, there's lots of uh, blog writers or specialists uh, PR people out there that would create that content for you. Um, I know particularly we've got a Bispot member that does that um, for us as well. Um, so yes, I would recommend uh, that you can outsource some of the content, um, but obviously it just needs to make sure that it uh, complements your marketing plan as a whole. Okay, thank you. And um, you have another question um, from Simon, and he asks, how do I respond to any negative comments? Um, so, basically with this, um, what you would do is, the first thing is not to panic, okay, and not mm -hmm. to delete it, okay. Um, this could be an opportunity, it, it depends what the... Um, complaint is um, obviously if they're using swear words or something like that um, you might have the rights to just delete that anyway but um, potentially if it's an opportunity for feedback and it's also an opportunity to um, to show uh, your audience how you respond to a problem and um, so I'm just trying to think of a, a negative comment that might be made um, I don't know if someone was uh, saying, I don't know, moaning about a local council or something like that, for example, um, you might want, the first thing that you might want to do is take the um, comment offline, and um, so you could say, uh, you know, um, note that you've registered that uh, complaint, refer it to the right team and say that that's happened, and then if they've got any further questions to email um, a given email address so that that's taken offline so that you're you don't get a bun a, pri a, a public bum fight basically mm. with everybody joining in so you wanted to take that comment offline as soon as possible and um, if you might have um specific uh, complaints procedure that you want to refer them to so again you could put them um refer them to um a web form to fill all of that information in um but sometimes you need to look at what the you know what the complaint is and if it's right you need to apologize publicly and say you know hand, hands up yes i'm sorry about that and um, that is a problem thank you for letting us know and we'll address it in whatever way it might be and just uh, make sure that you don't offer anything free because then everybody will be on the bandwagon to uh, to be putting more similar complaints in where they're getting uh, freebies but um yeah so 
there there is some there are negative comments on social media but um, you should again um, always have a social media strategy in place ready um, for any if that situation arises really um, and like I say don't panic and don't delete it straight away because they'll just come back post again and then uh, they're going to be doubly angry mm. but I can help with any of these things obviously okay um, well, these these were just a couple of examples to to say um, it's not always all the, all these different clients here. Some get one to one training, and and some get have coaching, um, and you know some have a half day's training, and some people come back for more, and uh, one person's an apprentice. So I, I cater for all different types of clients, really. Okay, okay. great. That's it. And those are all the different things that I train on. And your contact details. And my contact details. That's it. Okay, great. Thank you so much, um, Helen, for hosting today's webinar. I will be sending out a copy of the presentation and contact details for Helen to, out to you all very shortly. But before we close, just a quick reminder that this webinar is part of our service to our Smart Room members. And if you're not already a member or a Biz Smart client and would like to access the archive of webinars, then please visit our website, biz-smart.co.uk. So that's the end of our webinar today. Thank you for joining us and we hope you can join us again soon.